right all right all right happy monday everyone how are you doing y'all know things are always sticky in hollywood and in real life today we are honing in on this viral kiss that has social media in the biggest tizzy okay so make sure y'all come on in hit thumbs up shout out to everybody in the live chat i know there are quite a few of us here listen however you support the show the freeway is is greatly appreciated the freeway just means pay your fare you on my bus hit thumbs up that's how you pay some people send cash apps some people send super chats and all of it is appreciated but it don't cost nothing to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing while you're here having a good time parlaying with your girl Jane, it's me. Let's get into it. I am going to drop the link in a second so that folks are able to call in. I really want to hear from a lot of folks. I definitely want to hear from some parents with regards to this situation. So let me go ahead and hit this um, intro. Come on in. I'm going to drop the link. If y'all want to come in and line up um, just so that you have your spot in line so that you're able to call in, make sure you do so. Okay. And I hope y'all are feeling all right this Monday night. The following video is broadcasting live. And thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. So we are here. We are here. We have to talk about this, right? Real quick, as I say in all my videos, I hope that you're feeling all right. Hopefully you've had some time to tackle your own invisible problems, your spiritual warfare. You have no business dibbling and dabbling into celebrity matters unless you've handled what's going on in your world, okay? So get that checked out. And shout out to all of my new subscribers. There are quite a few of you. And before I get into breaking down today's topic, today's viral event, make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But you better make sure you think critically and independently regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else, okay? I really want to know y'all thoughts on this subject this evening. When I tell you social media has been in a blaze and it's like, you know, you, you, you've got to be careful. You have to be careful when you're talking about things of this nature uh, because it's very easy to offend people who are a part of the LGBTQIA plus community. It is, it is very easy. And I think, you know, for folks who are not a part of the community, we have a lot of learning to do to make sure that we're not stepping in a way where we are intentionally trying to offend people. Sometimes we just naturally are because it's just, when I was growing up, I'm a 90s kid. It was just gay and straight. Like that's all there was. Now you got gay, straight, bi, pansexual, and, and all of these other classifications of things. And we just have to educate ourselves as to how we address adults. But there's something going on with the children in particular that's really eerie. That's really eerie in my opinion. I know sometimes, you know, folks are like, the agenda, the agenda, <laughs> the agenda, you know. And a lot of times when I hear people mention stuff like that, like oh, the agenda, I'm like, bye. Like, because those conversations, they don't stay on track sometimes, right? And people end up busting out all these grand conspiracy theories that they have. And I, it's just too much for me. However, I can say that I do feel like the agenda has something to do with the way that, yeah, it, it is. It's very much a touchy subject. Um, I do think that the agenda is a part of this discussion. It is something that we're going to get into. So like I said, I dropped the link. I'm looking forward to um, taking some calls. If there's anybody willing to call in, um, but let's let's get right into it, right? So we're here talking about this image. You've seen the thumbnail. Zaya Wade has. Um, they say you can't speak on folks' kids. Zaya Wade posted a picture, and it has a lot of people uncomfortable. And I can honestly say, for me, it made me a little bit uncomfortable because I just don't like seeing kids. PDA, we, you know, it, you know, if you're a certain age, you know, PDA, PDA is public display of affection. And I know for me, and, and don't get me wrong, I know there's been a cultural shift in these kids, this, this younger generation, Gen Z or whatever, they, they have uh, a, a different ways of operating than my growing up black experience, you know, in the nineties. Um, but that was just some things that we didn't do, regardless of how you, regardless of what your orientation was, if you like the opposite sex, same sex, whatever, that was just some stuff that you just did not do. And for me, I'm like, it's, it's not that 14 year olds don't kiss. Of course, 14 year olds kiss, like, come on now. But I don't, 
don't like seeing children get it on or anything that will come a couple of steps. I don't want to see teenagers at first, second, third, fourth base, none of that. I don't want to see it. It makes me uncomfortable because it just, I even feel uncomfortable watching movies with heterosexual, you know, kids or kids, you know, opposite sex. And it's getting to a, a, a high school is in a sex scene. Like, I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. And I know our parents, you know, my growing up black experience was you wasn't 14 years old at the family party function cookout kissing on your little friend because that's what your parents called it. Your parents wouldn't even acknowledge your significant other as your boyfriend or your girlfriend. It was your little friend. And you, oh, that's my boy, your little friend. And we, you could barely even hug your little friend at the age of 14 in front of your peoples, let alone to be slobbing them down, right? And I know that it can be so, it can be so, anything that you say, any criticism or critique that you have or opinion that you formulate about the LGBT community, it can easily be seen as you're homophobic, you're queerphobic. And it's like, not every time somebody has a piece of criticism to offer or someone's letting, everything is not a phobia. Everything is not a phobia. I have no issues with the letters community. However, I can say that I feel like they get, we're talking about this isolated case. So this is not a blanketed statement because all members of the LGBT community don't act this way. Sometimes they get, that in this case, there's some special privilege here because in my opinion, Zaya Wade, right? Let's just, let's just do some backstory, okay? Zaya Wade is 14 years old. And my question to you is, do you feel like she's being exploited? It's only right to refer to Zaya Wade as a she because that is the, 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 the pronoun that Zaya has chose, chosen for herself, right? And so, you know, she, she decided that she wanted to transition at the age 11, which was 2019, right? So at, at, in 2019, she's 11 years old. She decides, hey, I, I want to transition and I want you to refer to me as, as, as a trans woman, right? Despite the fact that there has been no transition surgery. And, you know, it, it feels like exploitation. It feels like exploitation, to an extent, because this happened in 2019. A lot of people, nobody was checking for Gabrielle Union in 2019. And exploiting your child looks a lot of different ways. In my opinion, Zaya Wade is two posts away from being a sex symbol. I shouldn't have to open up my app. It'd be different if I was watching a show that was flat out about high, the high school experience and high schoolers. Well, I mean, you've got emerging and developing hormones, you're going to see some of that curiosity take place on the screen. But in this case, this is just, this is just a bit too much. And what, like, what makes a sex symbol anyway? Like a, a sex symbol is somebody that's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, regardless of what your orientation is, right? Bold, in your face, risky, even. A sex symbol is risky. They do stuff uh, uh, at a bit at a different frequency than um, a, a non-sex symbol or someone that's more conservative, you know, sexually conservative. And you know, you're embracing your sexuality. It's wham bam in your face. It's bold, and that's what a sex symbol is. And so we're getting to know Zaya, who was born Zion, right? In a way where why is that any of our business? Like, what are Zaya's hobbies? What does Zaya like to do outside of kissing on Zaya's significant other, right? Another thing that really had people um, moving away from discretion, that, that is one thing. We, we had to be discreet um, back in the day. And what really has a lot of people just kind of like, what, wait a minute, because it's like, who is, who is Zaya kissing here, right? Zaya, this, this is, Zaya Zaya's pronoun, despite Zaya's genitalia, Zaya is classified as wants to be called she and her, 
right? So you, you got to refer to Zaya as that, although that's not how Zaya was born, right? This non-Black person that Zaya is uh, in, in a romantic posture right here, right? I'm trying to be very careful with my words because I'm not trying to offend anyone. This is actually a person who was born a, a, a girl and wants to be referred to as he, his. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. It's a lot. It's a, it's, it's, it's a lot going on here. A lot of people, are, oh, this is Zaya's boyfriend. I mean, technically, if, if we're going to respect them pronouns, yeah, that's that's that is Zaya's boyfriend. These are two 14 year olds slobbing each other down. Their families are helping to take the pictures. Hey, I'm just Erica. Thank you for coming through. And it's just weird. It's just weird. You know, for me growing up, like I said, it was a child had to stay in your place. You couldn't hop in adults' conversations. The kids had their own table to sit at during the holidays or the functions. And you damn sure wasn't having any in, in, any pre-sex kissing, butt touching, intimate grabbing, touching. You know, th there was none of that taking place in front of your peoples. I don't even know if I have a picture of me kissing anybody when I was 14. And maybe I do, but if so, it's still in that flip phone. It, it, it and if it made it to, it, it didn't make it to social media because I, I, I just, I didn't have time to be playing them kind of games. I didn't have time for my mother to be finding out that that's what I was doing. There's no discretion here. There's no discretion here, and there's something weird about it. In my opinion, it definitely seems as though Zaya is being exploited, and it's crazy because there are a couple of people who are and are not content creators, but are a part of the LGBT community. I'm talking black queer men who also share that sentiment. When you have people from inside of the, the, the letters community, the LGBTQIA plus community saying, listen, this is exploitation. Everything, every sexual move, every different base that Zaya makes it to, whoever Zaya want to kiss, all that is not our business. It's not our business. And it feels like exploitation for the simple fact that we live in this time where you want to prove that you are progressive and open-minded. Like this is an, an era that is becoming constantly and increasingly progressive. And that means you have to be open to everything that's taking place. And if you have any pushback, or friction about that, you are being scrutinized because there is a huge cultural shift taking place. And Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade, it seems as though they, they really want to prove that I, we're the cool parents. Y'all the same mean girls? I'm the cool mom. I'm a cool mom. You can do what you want to do over here. <laughs> and it's like, okay, we get it. Like, Zaya is full-blown wearing dresses had micro minis last week. Like, we get it. You don't have to keep shoving this child in our face in order for us to understand. And we're talking about, we're, we're in this day and age where parents are, you know, parental rights are up for grabs by society, by schools. And it's pretty alarming. It's pretty alarming. And I want to get into this one case that caught my eye last year about it. Um, with regards to a parent who uh, lost custody of their 16-year-old child uh, because the school had gotten into the kid's head and the kid had kind of made some decisions about wanting to be trans and doing things to stop their, you know, puberty from taking place because they wanted to transition. And whatever it was with the parent not referring to that child as the child's preferred pronouns, that parent referring to their child as the child that they helped create, they had their parental rights taken away. I mean, all the way down to custody. This is the type of stuff that's happening. Listen, I don't care about any adult's orientation. When it comes to grown people who are 21 and over, and you, I don't give a shit if you want to transform into a goddamn a, 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 a turtle. Or a peacock. You a grown ass person going on, but when it comes to these 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 kids, mm, these are the most impressionable minds here. These are the future of society. And to have them make some of these permanent decisions when they're teenagers, when they're 11 years old. And when I say permanent decisions, I'm talking, you can go to school 
in, in some state, in plenty of states, actually, and tell some of your counselors and the school staff, hey, I want to transition and I don't and I want to take some hormones or I want to stop puberty because I don't want, you know, blah, blah, blah. You can make some of these changes without having to tell the parent. And then if the parent doesn't agree after this, this transition, this process is already taking place, the parent is up for this, this legal battle with trying to bring back, trying to protect their kid. These are permanent decisions all the way down to altering and weakening your bone density because of how society has stepped in and the schools have stepped in and said, hey, we do not need parents to sign off on these decisions. We gonna let these thirteen year olds decide what they want to shoot up in their bodies. That's a problem. That's a problem, and I, I just don't feel like it takes all of this virtue signaling. There, there are plenty of people who are down with it, so I feel like Dwayne and Gabrielle are really just they do too much, and I feel that Zaya is being exploited. Zaya is two posts away from being a sex symbol. Two more belly shirts. Two more pictures kissing on her significant other. You, there are sex symbols, and that's how they started out. You ain't got to be in a full blown XXX to, 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 you know what I mean? So it, it, it's just wild. And I think that Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union, they, they, they capitalize. There is social currency to be collected off of collective outrage. We live in this day and age where trolling and making people angry is something that you can flip into money or just social currency, e e either one. Because as long as you're trending, you're trending. A lot of people just look at it that way. Gabrielle, they're using Zaya, in my opinion, as a prop, as a prop, as a prop. Uh, nobody was checking for Gabrielle before uh, 2019 when Zaya decided to transition at the age of, of 11 years old, you know, but outraging people by putting this on front street. And then you have to also think there's nothing wrong with Zaya making those decisions, whether it be a permanent decision, whether it be a phase, there's nothing wrong with that. But for you, it's a dangerous move to put it on front street and to have it in front of everyone, which it, it gives more people access it gives more people room to discriminate and scrutinize her and that's not okay every step of the way every move that zaya makes with regards to her sexuality and her orientation all of that is not our business why are you over god damn i feel like they overshare more than the smiths who's worse <laughs> i mean who is worse who's worse and and like i said there is um, she, the biological mother of Zaya did put up a fight with regards to this, but you know, when you're fighting with someone who has an astronomical, uh, advantage financially over you, your chances of winning that fight, especially when you've got a, a you know, a child that is caught up in between the societal and the school rights of being able to do these things to your body and the parents, it makes it pretty difficult. It makes it pretty difficult. Um, and listen, I she's being used, in my opinion. Would we even have Gabrielle or D Wade's name in our mouth if it wasn't for everything that surrounds Zaya? They know for a fact people become ridiculously outraged when they overshare this stuff. Because this with regards to a kid. If you want to overshare your nasty big toes, if you're going to overshare you wanting to be a man and get pregnant, it's all types of stuff happening. Like, that's okay as an adult. But you're outraging the public on purpose because you know there's going to be pushback. And see, here's what happens with, with, with this type of outrage. Outrage. With outrage, there comes scrutiny. There comes naysayers. It just, just people coming down on you. But then you've got a selective... A uh, bunch of people who will rally around you to support you for one or two reasons. Either they, they genuinely stand for what you stand for or stand behind you and support you, or they just feel that it's unfair that everybody's pouncing on you at one time. But whatever it is, you've created a social media buzz, albeit good or bad or indifferent. 
you created that. And some people just feel like, damn, that's not fair. Let me jump in and take up with this person because this doesn't even seem like a fair fight. But they don't even agree with what you're saying. But all that is here nor there. It, it's still a part of outrage and how they're able to capitalize off of that. Scrutiny naysayers and people who are either going to agree with you. Another benefit to this type of, uh, to, to creating outrage. These celebrities are outraging you on purpose, whether you want to believe that or not. But it, it's time that we realize this, right? Like when you think about Lil Nas X, always just black guy. I'm pregnant. I'm, I'm, I'm giving the devil a lap dance. You know, Lizzo, oh, they try to say my, my ass, I'm going to keep showing them my ass, you know, blah, blah, blah. They're trolling you on purpose just to get that outrage because they are capitalizing off of it. They, they, they trend. A couple of people go stream the song. Some people see all of the outrage surrounding it and they don't know what the outrage is about. They just know, what the hell is Zaya Wade trending for today? What the hell is Gabrielle Union trending for today and then they go to the source to figure out what it is now there's more people invested and more people actually checking for the subject because they're stepping over the outrage it is a tactic it is a tactic and so they're going to trend because it's going to gain them relevancy whether it's good or bad and you'll have some people that get lost in the middle and they just feel like i feel like i see an unfair fight so i'm gonna just side with zaya zaya just wants to be who zaya wants to be nobody's saying force zaya to wear some pants don't let her wear a dress. We just saying, keep some of that shit out of our face. Because I don't want my 11-year-old sister making a decision to go to school and telling her counselor, hey, don't want to tell my mom at home, but I'm, I'm trying to get some hormones so that I can grow this and stop this from, you know, grow some facial hair and stop this from growing. That's dangerous shit. But there are several states where this is taking place and it's legal and God forbid you're that parent finding out when it's too late or when they're already starting some of these processes and they're crossing over. And now <laughs> it, it's illegal for some parents to refer to their child as a he when that's how they were born. Although the child prefers to be called a she, this is dangerous territory. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. But nonetheless, with, with the outrage, the roller coaster that these celebrities send you on, on purpose, you trend, you get the relevancy, you know, you're still the talk of the town, whether you're, whether it's good or bad. And like I said, Gabrielle Union was not relevant. Nobody was checking for her. Now, don't get me wrong. I feel like she's a talented actress. I do. But the peak of her catalog, when she was at her, her highest point of really having some hype surrounding her, it is behind her. And I feel like when Zaya came out in 2019... This that that was a part of her exploiting Zion. Now, of course, a, a, a kid is going to want what a kid is going to want. A kid may want some attention. They might want the cameras on them. They may want to be hyper visible. But kids also would want to would 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 eat two packs of sugar a day too. And I'm talking two pound bags of sugar a day too. That don't mean you give it to them because does a kid really know what's best for them? Your kid might want to eat snowballs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Does that mean that that is what's best for them? So because what Zaya asked for the spotlight, being in the, in, in the position, it, it wouldn't even be safe for a regular kid to get that type of spotlight. And, and like I'm saying, like just to bring all this into perspective, I don't care if this was a 14-year-old girl kissing on another 14-year-old boy. I don't want to see it. This public display of affection is just a bit too much. It's just a bit too much. And sometimes you, you, you get to the point, especially with this type of hyper visibility and exposure, you don't know what a real depressed person who's one or two days away from going on the glory from taking their own life. And a lot of times it looks very normal until it's not. You got people smiling from ear to ear and they go, you know, and so Zaya is already, regardless of what her, you know, sexual identity, you know, and preference and orientation is, Zaya is already in a position where it's dangerous for her, for her to be sharing this type of information to give people that leverage to know how to kind of poke at her. Celebrity kids can't do what regular kids do. And they damn sure shouldn't be oversharing, you know, but nonetheless, like I said, sex symbol. Zaya Way is literally two posts away from being a sex symbol. And that shit makes me uncomfortable. 
I don't like watching scenes with, 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 with high school kids, you know, touching on the thighs, and then you got the what it's insinuating to them. Like, ah, I, I don't, I don't want to see it. It reminds me of Kitty. Kitty's getting it on. I, I just can't do it, you know? I, I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't. And it's, it's just too much. And the way they parade her around, and parents wouldn't be halfway as relevant if they weren't doing this, in my opinion. But, hey, let, let me know what you think. Let's get into this parent who actually, actually lost custody of his child because of how his teenager got caught up in the system of society in the school feeling like they had a right they had a right to let this child transition without needing consent from the parents. Y'all make sure y'all hit thumbs up, all right? Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. Most definitely. We've got a caller calling in. How are you today? You gotta unmute yourself. Unmute, unmute. Let me go on and get this um get this article up here because I think I think it's important. And when I found out that this this man literally lost custody, lost custody of his kids. Okay, so let's go through this article. Okay, you still muted. So whenever your um your microphone lost custody. Hey, hey, make sure you mute of his kids. Okay, so let's go. I just muted you again. Okay, so this dad lost custody of his child for opposing transgender treatments. This case should frighten America, it reads. A California father lost custody of his transgender 16-year-old child after declaring his opposition to hormone therapy and after the judge asked the dad if he believes transgenderism is a sin, according to this report. So the father expressed unconditional love for his biological son in court proceedings before the superior court um, came down and asked the dad if he could affirm the child's self-identity. The child was a biological male that identified as a female and prefers they, them pronouns. Now, because of the father's position, he eventually lost all parental rights with no ability to see his child and no right to stop any medical treatments that could leave the child permanently infertile, according to the report. This is a shocking case, all right? And so the case began in 2019. It became public this month. His wife supported the child's transition, and the wife actually filed for divorce to support the child. Now, the father really just expressed unease about hormone treatments, asking the judge to consider research that suggested puberty blockers could impair cognition and diminish bone density, right? So hormone treatment, the father say, could make the child permanently infertile, which is a major concern if his child later decides to detransition. So he wasn't even sure if his son had gender dysphoria. He wanted to see if his son um, just kind of wanted to slow down a bit. So the father remembered the child actually having a crush on a girl in the fifth grade. So the judge asked the dad, do you think that being transgender is a sin? No, of course I don't think it's a sin. The dad says, the judge then says, so you don't think it's a sin, but you probably think that if they were truly transgender, you would prefer they not be transgender in our society, transgender people are the subject of a lot of discrimination. Would you agree with that? And the dad agrees and says, I agree that transgender people suffer from some discrimination and prejudice. The father acknowledged that the child might be transgender, yet that alone was not enough for the judge to continue his parental rights. So the judge says, it sounds like to me that you would prefer that this child, when it's all said and done, is just going through a phase. Is that a fair assessment? The father avoided answering the question, believing the judge was trying to trap him. And I agree. This judge is playing a lot of word games. Yes. This yeah. transgenderism was a sin. But nonetheless, we go on and it says, in the three years I've spent writing about families with transgender identifying minors, the story of Ted stood out as a case study of how gender ide ideology has infiltrated family law. Um, and this case is just crazy. And then here we get into the medical bill. This is the part here. 
<laughs> the father was stunned to see a two hundred nine thousand dollar eight hundred twenty dollars thirty four cents charged on his insurance statement. It was the cost of a puberty blocking implant and cross sex hormone treatments. Oh, that is a lot. And again, this is stuff that's happening at school without the parents knowledge. And then the parents got a $200,000, um, thousand dollar medical bill. It's just crazy. It's crazy to me. Yeah. What are um, your thoughts about it? I, I'm, I mean, I'm, before you got down there, I knew it was from California because it seems to me what's happening is that psychiatrists, just like all professions, they try to make their jobs easier, right? And so mm -hmm. it's it's a one size fits all treatment method. Mm -hmm. And if you, you have a, a child that's teenager or a, pu you know, pre a, a person in puberty who is um, depressed, then well, you know, hormones will help. But it will also make you grow hair on your chest, right? And a beard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I guess it just makes it easy because they can say, oh, well, you know, in a place like California, that's what they would use. I think in places like in the South, they would do some other type of uh, one size fits all treatment. They'd put the child on Adderall or they'll mm -hmm. put the child on, you know, painkillers. It depends on where it is. So regionally, I, I can see that happening in California and places like New York. But it's, it is dangerous. And what's dangerous about it is just the fact that they're treating every person as if they're the same yeah and 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 and, and what's happening is then their celebrities that are doing exactly exactly what you said is that they're getting clout from it and it's actually just steering traffic driving traffic to their projects and that's mm -hmm. what's happening it's really yeah child's being exploited it's it really sucks you know like i said you <laughs> your kids can say mom i'm a turtle or mom i want snowball that don't mean that that's you know it that don't mean that that's what you should be doing or what you should be giving it to, to right. them. Um, and and um, at some point, clout is a drug. All, all of this attention that celebrities, regular celebrities are exploited and it can become deadly at some point. Like you, these people go to Hollywood and they get swallowed alive. Even cis straight people get mm -hmm. swallowed alive because there's just so much um, just negative energy there. Right. So to to put that spotlight on your child while they're in the middle of figuring out who they are, because I'm sorry, whoever the hell you tell yourself when you're 11 years old, that does not mean that that's who you are for an eternity. You're still trying to figure it out. And you may feel that way on 11. I'm, I, when you're 11, I'm not trying to say that 11 year, you know, but it is still very much a developmental phase. So yeah, and I, think, I think it's something that's like, it's a movement that goes way back to the seventies. Mm -hmm. And there was actually something, I don't want to get a strike on your channel, but gender F, gender F movement, mm -hmm. gender, you know, that mm -hmm. word, but it's like, goes back to the seventies and it is, comes from like the late disco um, punk era, set, late seventies mm -hmm. groups, like white groups, like queen. I don't know if y'all remember, I'm giving my age now. Um, David <laughs> Bowie, but Prince, mm -hmm. Prince is a forerunner, a black forerunner to that movement. But that was just kind of like avant-garde, you know, stuff then. Now that is absolutely normalized and that's just baseline um, cultural behavior now. Yeah. So like, that's what we're doing, especially in places like California, which we're avant-garde 20 years ago, 30 years ago is now just baseline normal. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're just, that's what we're dealing with. And I mean, I'm trying to say it in a way, I don't agree that children, you know, who are still trying to explore themselves and figure out who they are, that those life-changing decisions should be made, but I'm doing exactly the way you are is that I'm trying to not, you know, get canceled. I'm trying to say it in a way that doesn't, because I have, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I have students. I have, you know, people who, you know, and that I know in my professional life who do have this experience of gender dysphoria, but they're adults. Yeah. And you know, I, I don't know any children at this point, but I know people that have just stopped being children. I, I could say, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if this is the decision. That is who they're going to be because I know when I was their age, I was a completely different person. Mm -hmm. I made completely different decisions, and they did not. And and you know that I, I could have probably <laughs> been you know better off had I known the things I know now, and I had had some uh, you know more adult influences stop me mm -hmm. things. You know, you know, just hey, you know, block things for me. But you know, 
It is what it is. Because that's what a parent is supposed to do. And it's just crazy that, you know, the legislation and, um, you know, if you refer, if you accidentally call the child that you brought into this world, you, you, you know, accidentally call them what they were when they were born. Like, first of all, I, I, <laughs> I have, my mother would call me the wrong thing all the time. And it was just because she had two kids. You know what I mean? And then we were 13 on, years six. apart. So we got called four days when she even got to mine. <laughs> like, so when your parent already like has more than one, you know, kid and, and they're just used to blurting out a child's name, that it's a lot of it is muscle memory. That's but true. then you've got some teenagers in legislation that says, look, if you refer to them as the wrong pronoun, despite how you've seen them come into this world, this could be a criminal offense and or we could be taking your kid away if you don't hurry up and start calling them these pronouns. Like, how long would it take for a parent to adjust to the fact that, okay, my kid is, I need to call them the opposite of what, I feel like that would just take I a feel, lot. Because even I, I still sure. walk in the door to my mom's house and she will look me straight in the face and call me my sister and just say, oh, duh. And it take her 40 seconds to, to get it right. Oh, duh. Who are you? And I'm like, come on, <laughs> man. Like, <laughs> but, you know, I feel pressure that, at, 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 you know, my particular job site that I, I'm not call everyone they. Because mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get sued. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say anybody I discriminate against them. Everybody's they. Mm -hmm. Period. And I mean, like, it is what it is. And, you know, I even got to the point where just the last few years, I've had students who have actually, like, demanded in the beginning of the semester, like, especially when Zoom started, that I ask everybody their pronouns. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm like, okay. Like, that's like now it's like, you know, you do the icebreaker in the beginning and you ask everybody, what's your class, you know, what, you know, what your major is, where you're from, what's your nickname? Now it's like, and what's your pronoun? And, it, mm -hmm. and it's just, it, it's, it's what you almost have to do in order to function. Yeah. And I mean, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with it, but it's like what you have to do. But you, if you think about it, that's what the courts have always done. Um, courts have always called every party plaintiffs, defendants, respondents, whatever they yeah. were always say they never called. And this is from the beginning, right? Of jurisprudence. They never responded to parties as he and she. So now what's happening is that, you know, family law has actually translated into almost all institutional, um, 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 policy and procedure where you do call everyone they as pronouns as, as just baseline. It can, yeah, it can be easier sometimes just to make sure like this is not, you know, offending, um, offending anyone. I try my best to, you know, just try to have the best etiquette and listen. And when someone goes out of their way to let you know what their pronoun is, it's like, okay, this is important, you know. And even now you notice you'll go to certain people's social media profiles between Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and you see they specifically have those pronouns up there. Hell, I'm even in corporate America, and I'm looking at the bottom of people's email signatures, and yeah. they've got it a point there because sometimes you just never know, and sometimes you know it's what? not even a transition in place. You, there, it's just a strong face with long hair, and it's like, oh, wait a minute, and it's all, oh, I'm going to. <laughs> but you know, I'm gonna tell you what. I don't know if I prefer the days when I started in my career about 10, 20 years, 15, 20 years ago, the days where my gay students actually had to ride around in the in on campus with a baseball bat in the back seat. Oh, yeah. Now that, that's real too. Yeah. So I don't know if I prefer those days because that was pretty dangerous. I felt a way about that. Like they, they and this was like, you know, HBCU, you know, whatever. These, but, those you know, days like, are still here. They They're still here. It's just, those days are definitely still here. Like I can't negate, you know, I'm, I'm friends with quite a few people who are part of the community and they right. still do fear for their health. But I do remember in high school, it was, um, it was, you know, I would just never forget. There was this one guy I went to high school with. He just so happened to be a twin too. And oh my God, his twin brother hated are you a twin? He was, I'm not a twin. No, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but there was this, this, this queer guy that I, I, I went to school with he was a twin and his brother hated it because his brother was straight and people would get confused who likes what, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he would come to school in, in a wig sometimes. Now, regular, everything else. Everything else was regular. Yeah. His shirts were kind of tight, regular. And with the wig on and him trying to go to the bathroom was a chore. Luckily, he had a sense of humor, but he still got hit. You know, he tried to come in our bathroom and we like, whoa, like, 
Just because you got on a win don't mean as a, as a defense mechanism as a survival. Right. That this was back That's in the day before a third bathroom was even thought of. The family right. bathroom, you know, the one that they got back in the day in the nineties and the two thousands. There was just two bathrooms, and it was easy to feel uncomfortable with somebody that just came to school. A guy who came to school in a wig, like it made you feel since like is something about to happen here. And so we would kind of like shun them. I'm not even going to start. Like, this is me being honest about the 90s. And then we would send them out. Like, you can't be coming to here. We're like, we don't want to use the bathroom. So he would need that. The sneaker used the bathroom. Or when he tried to use the guy bathroom, the guys definitely wasn't having it, especially the football players and everything. So him just kind of getting hands put on them. Nothing too bad, but they would just, they would like snatch his wig off, throw it down the hall, mm-hmm. all other types of stuff. And it was- See, yeah, that to me, that hurts my feelings too. Cause like that, that's not cool. But at the same time, there's no excuse. I don't, I can't, I just really think Gabrielle Union is exploiting that child yeah. because I don't think there's any way she, why she would just cut her child. I mean, cut the mother out of the parents. Did you know how they just cut that woman out of her life? Like just- biologically just throws her out all she's like almost homeless she has no contact like almost a no contact order she can't even like being i think that's what i've heard that she can't even be in communication or have unsupervised visits for her son or daughter the child and it's like come on you need all the help you can get with 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 any child like why cut somebody's biological parent that wants presence exactly wants access like why cut them out but then it's like you're dealing with you got to think it, it might be a bit more difficult to raise a Zaya Wade than a, 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 another kid. So why, sh- why shun away that help out of, um, you know, because they'd rather reason. go to a psychiatrist, right? And the psychiatrist, that's what they do. They prescribe drugs. They don't really, I mean, I guess they have like counseling, talk therapy and stuff like that, but I think there's got to be like, there's, it can't be that all these people all of a sudden, I wouldn't say all of a sudden, but appearing, you know, seemingly have this, just this gender dysphoria. Like, why is it so common now? Like, Because it's being put in front of all of these kids' faces. There's no reason we have these sort of classes, uh, you know, in elementary schools and in middle schools about how to stop puberty, how to use this certain enhancer. Like, that is weird. Like, we had to go home and have a parent sign off on a slip just to be taught sex ed. And that's just basic stuff that I feel like anybody is going to need. Like, what is a condom? What is a tampon? What is a pad? What you like, that's just, but even still, yeah. there's no focus almost on preventing teenage pregnancy. Cause I mean, that was, well, teenage pregnancy and AIDS was like the big focus was I was in school, like HIV and AIDS. That was the whole thing. In fact, I was like the first, I'm really telling my, (laughs) my (laughs) but I was like the first cohort in the world right? Mm-hmm. To actually have um, H- A- well, they didn't even call it HIV, AIDS education. When I went into um, uh, um, sex ed, mm-hmm. that was the first cohort, because it was in New York, was the first cohort in the world to ever have AIDS education as basic sex education. And I think there was only one child in the classroom who did not have class. And I think they was like, it was a kid from I- Iran or something like that. Mm. It was like, you know, Persian kid. Yeah, a Muslim Persian kid, but it was like that was it. Everybody else was in the class, and it was that's what it was. And I think there was one 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 um Hispanic kid, Mexican kid, um, and not like a you know like a Caribbean, but like a Mexican Hispanic. Mm-hmm. But it was like totally different. But it was like that was the focus was just to keep you from getting um AIDS. And I think what happened was like with my generation, we just kind of like all got like I'm a Gen Xer, obviously, basically on everything I'm telling you. Um, they, I just like, we just all like, as soon as we got, we got of age, we just married up so we could just like monogamy. And right. we, just, like, we just like, you know, glommed onto each other and was just like, and we just going to have kids. Cause there was always an, also a narrative that we were being, um, killed off by, you know, AIDS and crack. So we had, we felt like this, this, this need to have like procreate yeah. and now there's no desire to procreate around, among these children. So I guess they're not concerned. They don't want to procreate. I have, you know, children now or adults, they don't want to have children and I, I want to have grandkids, but they don't, they're not interested. Yeah. It can just be kind of, um, you know, scary when you think about all that. I mean, it was scary enough for me coming up, um, and surviving my childhood, you know, just being misunderstood for, for whatever reason, um, uh, let alone this society is ruthless. They are That's desensitized. <laughs> they are bold. 
you know, they don't even know how to sneak and do something. They go into the store and they steal something. They record it and upload it to the internet. Like, how are you stealing and you like they and don't know how proud to? Of it. That's true. Yeah, you know, there's no discretion. You know, they're committing all sorts of crimes on camera, whether it be theft, whether it be violence. Yeah. You know, it, it's 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 a wild time, and and it's yeah. everything is for shock value or it's prank worthy, and, and you, just it's like that, your heartbeat yeah. outside of your chest. It's difficult it's to want to send your heartbeat out here when you know that the kids are cruel, society's trying to trick them, just everything. Even just walking down the street while black as a teenager, they're looked at as adults. It, I mean, it's, yeah. it can be scary. Adultification. Yep. Yeah. And this is that's what that's what it, that's the word adultification. This child is being a Yikes. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's that's really crazy because that's a girl that, okay, well, I'm gonna let you go and I'm not gonna keep you on, but thank you. This is scary. Yeah, so. it's definitely thank scary. Um, Do me a favor. I want to talk to you off camera, off the show. So yeah. um, if you're not in the discord, send me a message on Twitter or Instagram so that we can oh, connect because I want to talk to you about something. Okay, absolutely. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for calling in. Okay, all righty. So, um, yeah, you know, this is this is really interesting. It definitely took over social media today. A lot of people were really shocked just to understand, like, wait a minute, he's kissing somebody who is biologically a a, a woman, a girl, has, kissing somebody that's got a vagina, but wants to be, you know, pronouns are he um, and his. Well, no, I think it might be they or they, but postured as a man you know it's so difficult to try to get it right without offending some goddamn body and yeah the question is who took this picture you know that's that's the whole thing I, we couldn't slob our little friend our significant other our boyfriend girlfriend whatever we could barely even hug without our parents down our throat so it's just weird parents encouraging 14 year olds oh yeah kiss <laughs> You got to think, like, these are the ways. Do you think it was just one take for this picture? Like, every picture that celebrities take, no, they took at least five or more takes in, before they choose the one that they want to upload. So it just, it, it seems like the sexualization of children, this is sex symbol behavior to be exploiting all of your sexual moves because it's risky, because it will outrage people, because you'll trend, you'll go viral, you'll this, that, and the third you know, me personally, the first thing I thought outside of being immediately disgusted, you know, and just uncomfortable, right? Because I, I don't have a problem with same sex people. Like I'm friends with plenty of them. Um, but the first thing I thought was, is this little person using Zaya? Because you got to think like what the, the parents net worth are well over a million dollars. Zaya's got all these resources, all of this clout, all this that, you know, People your age can still be predators and want whatever social currency is associated or clout associated with you. So it's like, first of all, even if Zaya wasn't, if this wasn't Zaya's identity, if, if, if Zaya was cis hetero, they still run the risk of somebody coming along and wanting to gold dig on them. So it's just like, is this somebody that really likes Zaya or, and, and why is their picture online as well it's it's just it's a lot and, and this definitely took over um took over the internet today it, it took over the internet and in my mind i'm like this per this this clear person could be walking up to zaya and just using them for whatever they can get trying to make a name for themselves they're gonna accept being slobbed down they might even initiate it sometimes and they're gonna go off with whatever cloud you know and, and then it's like are they going to have a good or a bad breakup? You know how easy it is to trash somebody when you've had access to a celebrity's child. Look at all the things that the the controversy surrounding Beyonce's sister Solange's son, Jewels Smith, last week. He's 17 years old, but some girl that he had sex with without protection an 18 year old who's on OnlyFans. That's a whole nother situation. But Beyonce's nephew is 17 years old and he had sex with the girl and they had a text message exchange and the girl ended up exposing the DMs and all and causing this bad press. Can Zaya really handle all of these things compounding together? It, there wouldn't be any insult to add to the injury if all of this wasn't being overshared and exploited and shoved in our face this way. God forbid they end and that person breaks up with Zaya, 
Zaya still got to go out here and put a brave face on. And it, how do you know your child can handle that? How do you know? This is the first person that Zaya has has placed has been in a, in a relationship with this, that she shared. We haven't seen Zaya being in any other relationships before. Her. So how do we know that with this hyper visibility, with the parents' help helping to shove this in everyone's face, that Zaya will be able to take the scrutiny that comes with the breakup? Some people going to take the this, this kid, this kid. What do I call this kid? This significant other. Some people gonna take white shirt side. Some people gonna take black shirt side. I'm just going by the shirt color. It just so happens that shirts do kind of correlate with. That's not the point. But the point is, there's a lot of scrutiny here. But right? is this kid ready? Is this ready? Is this kid ready? I, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure. I want to know what you all think about it. If you haven't hit thumbs up on this video yet, just, just take a second to do so. It's free. This is my bus over here and pay your fare and hit the thumbs up button. I really do appreciate it. And it goes a long way. And I do think that this, this level of visibility that Zaya has, it does have something to do with the agenda. Adults are going to do what they want to do, but the, the way that children are influenced because Zaya is the, yeah, I was trying. I was trying. These kids are are the subject of this influence. And it, it it would even be a different conversation if a lot, if if this case was a case of just hyper visible adults making these decisions to transition. But with Zaya being a minor herself and being a very young minor, a 14 year old minor being the subject of all of these sexual choices. And, and that's a lot to, it's a lot for me to comprehend and to keep in mind, okay, what's the difference between this and this and this? And these hormones and, and stopping my period from coming or, 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 you know, that's a lot for me to take in. And I'm three decades old, let alone for a kid, a child to have to conceptualize all of those things and make decisions. It's, it's just, it's too much. And I do feel like it does have something to do with the agenda. I feel like the kids are being targeted. Like there's no tomorrow adults. If you want to transition into a frog, a peacock, Hell, Miss Cleo or the tree outside your house. That's your fucking business. And nobody cares. Because you, at your big ass age, you sign those papers to make that decision. But for these kids, it's a bit too much. You, you even got to think there's some um cartoons I saw on Blue's Clues. They had snuck something in there about kids masturbating and kindergartners. You know what I'm saying? Masturbating and teaching kindergartners how to touch themselves and pleasure themselves. I'm like, what the hell? What the hell? What the fuck is wrong with you that you teaching kindergartners how to... You're sick. You're sick. You're sick. You're sick. You're sick. Um, nothing's okay with that. So between having to watch these kitty cartoons with your kids, watching the shows, watching the advertisements, trying to keep a, and don't get me wrong, social media is not responsible for raising your kids. However, the influence is undeniable. It's, it's just that simple. People are like, oh, because I'm talking about the influence, right? And I'm like, okay, everyone's influenced by advertisements. All advertisements are not formatted like a commercial on television. A lot of the times, the, the, the shit, the ideas, the nuances that are being advertised and pushed, it doesn't come packaged in a television commercial. We see it come to life online and on social media because more people are on social media than they're watching TV. And so that's where a lot of this stuff is being placed instead. And so when I talk about influence, I brought up earlier the parallel of just, just food commercials. You up late at night, you up any time of day. If there's an overage of McDonald's commercials and unhealthy ass commercials, obesity skyrockets in kids and adults because that is what the, the, the focus and the priority is. And that's just how influence works. And then there was someone that was like, oh, well, um, well, just because kids watch, you know, take in a post like this or it doesn't make them gay. And I'm like, true. 
That's very true, right? Just like me watching a McDonald's commercial or watching a, a, a heap of a processed food commercials, just, just watching the commercial alone doesn't make me fat. It's the lingering influence that's left in my mind after the commercial goes off or after I'm done scrolling past the McDonald's and the Burger King and the Arby's and the this, that, and the third, I'm still in the back of my mind, like, I'm going to get a burger today or tomorrow. I just, I just want it. Like, you know, that influence, it lingers. And so kids are more impressionable than anybody else. So I feel like they are worth protecting and, and not being offered up as some sort of sacrificial lamb to what society is trying to push on them. Adults, that's on you. But these kids, and, and, then, and then you got to, don't get me started with, with the, the, the transgender Leah who trans, trans, trans woman transitioned into a woman and then goes to all of these professional swim competitions and is winning because they're technically considered a woman, but they weren't born that way. So all the natural born women, you've got an unfair advantage <laughs> because you have a different level of testosterone and hormone. The fact I, I, agreeing with Caitlyn Jenner was not on my 2022 bingo card. Let me just say that. However, for it to have had been Caitlyn Jenner that spoke up is like, hey, I transitioned. Is that is that a good impersonation? Hey, I transitioned from a man to a woman. And it's not fair. As someone that competed in the Olympics, it's not right. It's, it's just a confusing time that cis heterosexual women have to fight for how sacred their craft and their skill is because you've got a select few that will try to infiltrate sport. There are enough trans people so that they can start their own fucking league and not be taken from people who were born and who are competing within their orientation. It's not fair. And for kids to be, imagine a kid deciding, hey, well, I want to, I want to win. I can't win amongst all the guys. I'm 13. I can transition because I remember the school telling me I could transition and I don't got to tell mine. And I guarantee you I can win some gold medals if I win against these girls, if I just transition. Hell, you got people popping up pregnant in the all women's Yadamini because a person that transitioned from a man to a woman is within the... Like, it's, it's a weird time to be alive. It is so weird and it's so confusing. And it's not fair for, for parents to not be allowed to have some control over the hormones that they do not want in their minor children. If Botox is wrong to give to your 14 year old, which it is, I'm not arguing that at all. If Botox is wrong and shouldn't be able to be done on minors, if a minor can't walk and go get a tattoo because that's yet another permanent decision, what the hell would make you think that injecting all of that stuff into minors is okay and parents shouldn't have to have a right? Parental rights are at risk. We are losing parental rights. Imagine losing custody of your 16-year-old child because you still want your child to be able to develop and you're trying to understand how they're navigating in their developmental and losing custody because you're, you're still trying to understand what all the transitions and you're worried about the irreversible effects, infertility, reducing your bone density. This is serious stuff. It's really serious stuff. And, you know, like I said, uh, Zaya Way is, is, is two posts away for being a sex symbol, in my opinion. Trans women in sports is, is concerning. It's very concerning and it's unfair. I feel like all of those women should sit out until they really enforce that rule. Um, you know, but one thing that I do, because I know it can be confusing for us people that grew up back in my day, I'm a 90s kid. <laughs> I'm a 90s kid. So like I said, when I was growing up, right, and I'm, I'm always trying to learn, right, I can be critical of something. I can be critical of a jester, but still hold myself to a certain responsibility where we still have to learn. And I know, like, for my parents, they are not open to understanding anything outside of gay and straight. They don't see anything outside of gay and straight. If you are anything that's not straight, they're going to call you gay and that's on period. 
I came up when it was gay straight and then I then then there was bi then there was just three but that was just a whole bunch of other stuff too and sometimes it can be really confusing on um the difference between sexual orientation and gender and gender identity so I just wanted to go over that definition really quickly sexual orientation is different from gender and gender identity sexual orientation is about who you're attracted to and who you feel drawn to romantically emotionally and even sexually it is different than gender identity gender identity isn't about who you're attracted to, but it's about who you are, male, female, gender, queer, et cetera. Okay. So it, it can be different. It, it can, it can get a little muddy in the middle if you don't understand it, but you know, regardless of how and where, you know, Zaya lies, I think that this is, this is pretty dangerous waters. And I see a lot of people comparing Zaya to, um ej magic johnson's son magic johnson's son is a whole adult a whole adult a whole adult um and and i don't want to trivialize any of the experiences that the lgbtqia plus community can feel when they feel like they have to hide their identity or they can't live in their truth or they don't have support from the people around them I'm not trying to trivialize that. And I understand it can be, it can be dangerous, you know, when you are, um, when you are submerging what, what you, what your identity is at that time or in general, but we got to, we, we've got to create boundaries for children. We, we just do. I did go to school with, with a couple of people who literally we went to elementary, middle and high school together. And they knew from elementary school that they were gay. But they wasn't taking no hormones to get rid of nothing, stop this, grow that, enhance that. And, and a lot of my friends, like, I could tell. Like, I had a friend, I've been friends with this dude since kindergarten. He finally told me when we got to the ninth, 10th grade, I'm gay. And I'm like, boy, you know how long I've known that? <laughs> like, I've known that. So, I mean, yeah, you can be certain about who you are and, and, and maybe, like, what you like around about that time when you're pubescent. But those permanent, irreversible effects, mm -mm. you cannot play with those things. And there, there's so much data. There's so much information out here about some of the tragedies that take place on the table. And especially, you got to think, sometimes, you know, people who are part of the, the, the community, they talk about how if they don't have the right insurance, if they don't have a lot of money, they end up in an alley somewhere. They end up getting these, you know, under the table black market procedures done because they want it done quick or they want to enhance that. And, and that can be that can be dangerous as well. So it's just time that we, you know, do our research, create some boundaries for these children. I care about these children. I care about these children. And, and there's nothing like someone who wants to reproduce or wants to have kids or and they're infertile because of a decision that they made when they were 14 because their parents allowed them. Hell, I went to school with plenty of people who felt like that everybody was gay in high school when I went, right? All, all the girls were gay. All the girls were gay. And a lot of them grew out of that shit. I'm not saying that that's the, that's the case for everybody. I've seen plenty of people who didn't. But a lot of people, they it was it was a very experimental time. It was a very experimental time. And who's to say that that mindset of that middle and high school minor should determine the rest of your life and how that goes. It's just a bit weird. It's just a bit weird to me. And that's just my opinion with regards to Dwayne Wade and Gabrielle Union exploiting the shit out of Zaya. Um, just trying to prove we're, we're progressive, we're cool, we're open-minded over here. It's, it's, it's just some bullshit-ass virtue signaling for me because all of that is not our business. What happened to back in the day, like my grown-up Black experience, and I know a lot of y'all was too, let me know in the chat, okay? Put a, put a one in the chat if it was, what happens in my household stays in my household. I grew up like that. And I did used to sneak boys in. I ain't even gonna fucking lie. I was a teenager when I was, 
But what happened in that house when I snuck them boys in, <laughs> whether it been kissing first, second, third, fourth base, it's, it's, it stayed right the hell there. It damn sure wasn't up, up on the internet when I was 14, 15, 16, doing, zipping and doing it. Oh, no. It wasn't appropriate. And I wasn't about to get my ass beat. Nor did I want anybody to know. What the hell? Why would I, why, I just, it just, the only people that saw us kissing when we was 14 were the people who were in the, in the dance hall or whatever. If it was a, uh, uh, what they call that before graduation, farewell dance. You got the ring dance when you got your class ring and you know, it might be a couple of packs going on. Wasn't nobody walking around trying to take a fucking picture putting it. I get it. We live in a different time, but. Hmm. Hmm. Huh? What's going on? I see a lot of ones. What happens in this house stays in this house. So what would make you think that when you when you're 14 and you get an intimate, that don't got to stay in the house? <laughs> that shit better stay in the house. And if you just so happen to have a picture, keep that shit in the photo album and keep it in your phone. Because it's not for everybody else to know. It's just not. It's just not. It's a weird time. Weird, weird, weird time. For the record, we, we need to go to the bush. Let's go to the bush. It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. There are just about a hundred of us in the building this evening on my bus, in the building on the bus. Y'all get it. Do me a favor and hit thumbs up. It means a lot. Y'all know my old channel got deleted. <clears throat> I had a little over 100,000 subscribers and I got deleted. So any way that you can support this stream is very greatly appreciated. Hitting thumbs up is easy. Sharing it on Twitter is mega easy. Share this joint via text message with somebody who you think will have a good ha ha he he giggle. Let me know. <clears throat> mm. Not me choking in front of y'all. Hold up. Mm -mm. <clears throat> I got to get it together. So here's what I'm going to do. I am going to play this commercial real quick. I am accepting new sponsorship and new ad slots. So if you own a, a, a have a black owned business and I, I am, I am only working with black owned businesses. So sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I'm off of my people. Um, black owned businesses. I am looking to work with some of you all in curating an ad and running it here on my channel. I'm going to play this commercial. We're going to come back, do the sticky note, and then we're going to get out of here. Okay. All my channel members, you know what we got into last night. Y'all know we got into that T.I. stand up that he did here in Baltimore. And y'all had a lot to say when we were backstage for the channel members. So I'm going to play this commercial. We're going to be right back, get into the sticky note, and we're going to get out of here. Okay. It's time to face it, boo. Your product needs more exposure. If you want to see your ad here on my channel, be sure to shoot an email over to yt.theplainestjane at gmail.com and let's chat. But if you're new in my neighborhood here on YouTube, hey. I'm the plainest Jane and I provide coverage and commentary on trending stories, viral events, and black culture. I definitely, definitely appreciate you stopping through and hitting that subscribe button if you'd like more of my particular brand of syrup. You know what? This is a really good question. First of all, thank you S. Watts for the $20 super chat. I really appreciate that. I see some people in the chat saying, what do the um what does a white person's parents think and you know what <clears throat> i would love to know i would love to know but i'm gonna go ahead and tell you what my guess is my guess is they are loving this exposure they are loving this association it is what do they call it? extortion it'd be so easy to extort and i'm not like trying to put any ideas out there but it's like look don't think that even the parents of this young man right Zaya's a girl this person wants to be referred to as as a as a young man via their pronoun don't think that they that them parents ain't benefiting off of this somehow whether they're pitching a business deal whether they want donations to their charities if they're or you know or anything like that do not think that those parents are not able to capitalize off of this somehow this way either one of these kids could be a pawn or being exploited even this this uh, kid in the white shirt, okay? So I, I, I would love to know what those parents think. 
Um, I did visit the profile of the kids earlier today. And again, it just makes me, it just, it just, it just makes me uncomfortable seeing kids do stuff like that. You know what I mean? So I had, I, I called myself, I said, I'm about to follow this little boy. I said, I'm about to follow this little boy in a white shirt so that any and all updates surrounding this situation, you know, I can be notified, but there is just something so gross about following a 14 year old online that, you know what I'm saying? If, if, if I, I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I, could, I just, I was just like, these is kids. I got to get up out of, like, and I just, either way it goes, like, I just don't care. And it's like, we're talking about as young as 14. After the kid is, it's like 17 going on 18 and they really just be minding their business. I don't know, making their music, doing their social media skits. They think they funny, you know, whatever. All right. You know what I mean? Because that's funny. And, and I, I like communicating with the youth. There is a big disconnect between the youth and, and adults, right? A lot of people you know, adults, they just scrunch their face up at the youth because they don't get them. They don't understand them. They feel like y'all and all that rap, blah, blah, blah. So I do value the connection that I do have with the younger generation. I just don't want to see them slobbing each other down. I just don't. I That's not what I want to see. You ain't going to get me caught up on no CP bullshit. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Boy, girl, 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 girl. I don't care. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Um, but nonetheless, let me go ahead and get into this this sticky note. This was a really interesting stream. I appreciate all of you all coming through. I want to get into this sticky note. I'll talk a little bit about what's backstage, what videos you all can expect from me tomorrow. I'm in the process of editing just a little something, something. The channel members already noted it, but I will inform the rest of you all. But nonetheless, look. Let's get into this sticky note. The following video is broadcasting live and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. So today's sticky note is this. Make a plan, keep it to yourself, and watch how you succeed quicker. You'll find yourself effortlessly dodging roadblocks because you aren't telling people where to put them. OK, make a plan. Keep it to yourself. You will have less roadblocks and, you know, peace of mind, peace of mind as you evolve. It is a luxury that you have to carve out and curate for yourself. And, and it, it is a fight. Maintaining your peace of mind and swapping away distractions. It is a fight. You have to fight for that peace. You have to fight for your sanity and not in a violent type of way, but you have to be very aggressive. Or, or, or stern when it comes to maintaining your peace of mind because different people and different things and different elements will come in and they will snatch that shit from you. And so when I say make a plan, keep it to yourself and watch you succeed quicker because you will be effortlessly dodging roadblocks because you aren't sharing all of your business with these people. This is what I mean. Protect your path, protect your journey and protect who you are becoming. It's not about speed. I know this quote involves me saying, oh, watch, you'll succeed quicker if you make a plan and keep it to yourself. It's really not about speed. It's about peace of mind, which is priceless. And the things that were sent to disturb your process, they're going to slow you down. They're going to tamper with your peace and your focus as you evolve. That's just what distractions do. So it's not about speed. It is about maintaining your peace of mind as you evolve. And you will understand that the best luxury that you had that you will never have to pay for is your peace of mind. And you have to protect it at all costs. You'll find yourself telling everybody your business. You're excited. You feel like all these people are on your side. All these people going to support me. I got this coming up and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do this. And you'll find yourself with all these fucking roadblocks. Like this isn't working or that isn't working. And it's because you've shared it with people who may, whether it's subconscious or not, they don't have your best interest. And there are things that come into play that are just set to just throw you off and distract you. And these are from people that you would think are your supporters. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to fear monger and say, keep all your plans to yourself. Your supporters could be haters. Yeah, some of your supporters could be haters. But there is something about that solitude 
and having a plan that no one can throw a monkey wrench is because you haven't even given people an idea as to what the hell you got going on. I, it was a lesson that was best served cold for me, realizing that I need to keep my mouth shut about some of my aspirations to protect my path, protect my journey, protect who I am becoming as I evolve. Because when you're in a state of evolution, you're in a very vulnerable space. You're in a very vulnerable state. You're lost, so to speak, but beautifully lost because you're shedding old skin, shedding old ways, shedding old people, old personality traits, and you're transforming into something new. And while you're in that transitional space, that stage, you're more vulnerable. And, and if you don't have peace of mind while you're evolving, you are, there is something about that tribulation when you are not right in the mind and, and it's just nothing but chaos around you. Are you really evolving if you're not at, at peace when you evolve it's it's an added bonus to make sure you protect your mind as you grow to the next level otherwise everything is, is just every every growth spurt doesn't have to be full of chaos it doesn't have to be difficult but if you're consistently inviting everybody along on your path with you while you grow you will find yourself between a rock and a hard spot everybody cannot come with you on your journey to success it's not meant for everybody you might have good intentions you might want to say, look, I'm opening the door. Y'all, let's all, let's go, let's grow. But everybody don't want to grow. And everybody may not know, I don't want to grow. But they've got a lot of fucked up habits that will prevent them from growing. And if you have them in your vicinity, it's going to spill over to you. It's going to spill over to what you're doing. It's going to affect your focus in a negative way. So when you make plans, when you keep it to yourself, you will find yourself succeeding quicker. And it's not about speed. It's about preserving that luxury, which is peace of mind. There won't be as many roadblocks because people don't even have a clue of where to throw the monkey wrench because you have not told them. You have not shared. You might've shared it with one person. Maybe you got one confidant. All right. Keep it there. Maybe two. All right. But if you're used to sharing your plans with 13 people that you think are for you, reconsider, baby, read some literature on the subject. Those who get it, get it. Um, but you understand what I'm saying? That is what the sticky note of today is. It was a little lengthy, but I had to get it out. And those of you all who are familiar with me and my format and how I drive my bus over here, y'all know that the sticky note is really just the most important thing of the day. It is a motivational quote that I leave with you. It is a motivational quote that I have crafted on my own. I don't take quotes from anywhere. I craft these on my own because these are quotes that I have used that are helping me with where I am right now. So in, in no way am I like talking at or preaching to people and, and it, I'm not even taking the message. If I'm giving you a sticky note, it means that I was more than likely struggling with whatever I'm talking about and I'm helping myself to improve my path and my journey. And I found that sharing my sticky notes, a lot of people rock with it and it, and it motivates other people. So I share these sticky notes, they motivate me. They are tucked at the end of a lot of my videos because that's just my format. But if you want a little actual razzle dazzle, make sure you check out the community tab because a lot of the sticky notes are there already. Sometimes I'm reading a sticky note that's already there. And sometimes I'm given a sticky note that I haven't placed on the community tab yet. And so if you really want to look at something to take a screenshot or read something two or three times to really just fill yourself with something that's inspirational or motivational, check out the community tab. The sticky notes are there. If you follow me on Twitter, you already know what it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm tweeting all day long and, and the sticky notes do come from Twitter. But uh, nonetheless, make sure you connect with me on social media. If you have not already, follow me on Instagram and on Twitter and tag me in your favorite trending topics. I'm on Twitter 24 seven. Okay. The best and the easiest way to reach me is on Twitter. If you do want to connect in between shows, content streams, so on and so forth. Someone says move in silence. Absolutely. That's a great takeaway um, from the sticky note today. My life changed drastically when I learned to keep my mouth shut and to keep my plans, my plans for success to my damn self. My life changed extra. And, and I just had no clue that me sharing with people that I thought were supportive of me was a hindrance. It was a detriment. It was regressive. Um, but I learned. So look, if that sticky note resonated with you all, be sure to comment down below in the chat. I'm doing me. So I know it's real. <laughs> and that's whether you are right here on the bus catching us live or if you're chasing the bus, which means you are catching the replay. Okay. 
So this has been a really nice stream. I really enjoyed sitting back. I enjoyed opening the phone lines. Listen, when I'm talking about a trending topic, a trending topic that's been trending today or within like the last couple of days, I want y'all to get into the habit of understanding that I'm going to open the phone lines and I want y'all to call in because I like having discussions and conversation. So I appreciate the person that called in earlier. And if there's ever a time where I am doing a video and you want to call in, get my attention in the chat, open the phone lines, Jane, open the phone lines, because that is something that I want to integrate into my format over here. And really just this community that I'm cultivating over here with my 4.13 thousand people I got over here. Okay. It's a little something, something. It ain't 102,000 subscribers like I had, but it is a little something. And, and, and I'm proud. Okay. So look, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for your time and your energy. Oh, I do want to show off my sassy cat real quick. Yes. I want to show off my sassy cat because He's so opinionated and he's so talkative and I, I just don't know where he got it from, you know? Leo, get down. Get down. It's not a thank you because it's not a question. Because why would he ever be talking to me with that type of attitude? Did y'all hear the way he smacked his lips before he even got started? He said... Before he even got started, like he sassy, moody, nasty. This cat is sassy, moody, nasty. The nerve. He said, eh. I said, no, he did not smack his lips to me before he even got to cussing me out. The nerve of me for wanting to sit in my own chair in my own office. I, I just, what? Leo. Get down. Get down. It's not a thank you because it's not a question. Damn! What I do? Besides raise this nigga for about seven, eight years. What the hell I do? To deserve that? I, 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 just, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. I be joking. I'm like, oh my gosh, like um, <laughs> I say, yo, he is, um, he's so talkative. He's so opinionated and he got something to say about everything. Where does he get that shit from? Obviously he get it from me. Right. But that's not the point. The point is he has no business talking back to me this way. That's the point that I'm trying to make. All right. It's not okay. It's not okay. <laughs> It was that really long meow at the end. I'm going to have to put a compilation together because I have several clips on my phone of him talking to me that way. Um, and I'm going to need him to stop talking to me that way. I mean, I think it's funny, but like, damn, like this is still a black household. You know, you're not supposed to be talking back like that before. Let me stop for y'all call Peter on me. I don't got time. I don't got time. <laughs> it's a kid's these days. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot, but nonetheless, look, shout out to all my channel members. Um, I do have a video coming tomorrow um, of T.I.'s response to the Barclays debacle and being booed and all that other stuff. That video is going to be edited and it'll be put up tomorrow. To all of my channel members, if you're already a channel member, um, you have already seen or you probably should check the members only community tab so that you can listen to T.I.'s full, what was it, like a 25 minute set when he came here to Baltimore last night. Was it last night? Was it last night or the night before? It was Saturday night. Today's Monday. So T.I. did his stand-up thing here in Baltimore on Saturday night. <clears throat> and if you want to listen to the whole thing, if you want to be the judge for yourself as to whether he's funny or not, um, be sure to get backstage and check it out because it's there. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, and y'all will get, a, I think, like a five-minute snippet tomorrow where I put on display his response solely to being booed and just a really quick synopsis of my thoughts on T.I. and if he was funny or not. All right. Um, he said it was his news first. Look, 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 look. It's back there. Look, let me know your thoughts on Zaya Wade, Gabrielle Union, Dwayne Wade. Is Zaya being exploited? Is the young man in the white being exploited? Uh, being used as a pawn in any old sort of way, do you think the parents are able to benefit? 
somehow from it. Any and all thoughts, I want to hear from you down below in the comments. Don't forget to keep it sticky and real as always, okay? I always recommend y'all check in on yourself, find some peace, do some things to grant yourself release and make sure you hold on to your loved ones, okay? Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up or down, either way. I appreciate it, but make sure you think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. Y'all drop some of them pancakes and y'all stay beautiful, black, and blessed. Until the next time. Deuces. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.